Hi, this is Mrs. Cribb, and we are going to go over the notes for Chapter 4C. So you should pull out your notes before we get started, and we're just going to be covering um, atomic number and mass number and isotopes. So these are pretty easy concepts, and some of them you probably already had. So if you haven't already pulled out your notes, stop the video and go ahead and get them. All right, so atomic number is just the number of protons in an atom. And the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And remember that protons and neutrons are in the nucleus of an atom. So an isotope is an atom has the same number of protons as another atom, but they have different numbers of neutrons. That's the only thing that makes them different. So for instance, uh, I have one down here, carbon-14. Um, Isotopes of an element have essentially the same chemical properties, but the certain physical properties like how much they weigh, their mass rather, density, evaporation rates, and diffusion rates um, vary a little bit between isotopes. So let's look at carbon-14. Now over here in this graphic you can see when you're doing isotopic notation, the, the X represents the chemical symbol. That's the chemical symbol. So for carbon-14 that will be a C because carbon and the symbol for carbon is a C. If I look here in my interactive uh, periodic table, here's carbon right there. And this is a really cool table because I can have it look at orbitals, which we talked about in 4B. And so carbon, I hit carbon, and notice that it gives you um, the information like what group it's in. And look at right up here, you can see this is the electron configuration for carbon. 1s2, so there's energy level 1, 1 and 2, and then the 2s, 1 and 2, and then the 2p, 1 and 2p, 2. So nitrogen goes all the way to 2p, 3. And so it's showing you the electron configuration right up here. That's, that's interesting about that. So carbon, there's the atomic number of carbon. It's a 6. That means it has 6 protons and 6 neutrons. So over here, I know that the um, atomic number, the atomic number, which the atomic number symbol is a Z, is 6. Now, when we're writing isotopic notation, the number that goes at the top is the mass number. So the mass number goes at the top. See here? Mass number. So that is 14. This right here, when you do the name, when it looks like this, this number is the mass number. So the mass number goes at the top. The atomic number goes at the bottom. And so since the atomic number is just the protons and the mass number are protons and neutrons, the, the mass number should always be larger than the atomic number. So this would be the isotopic notation for carbon. And this would be for a pure, not pure, a neutral atom. Because neutral atoms, remember this, that neutral atoms have the same number of protons as, as electrons. Same protons and electron count. So if I have six protons, I also have six electrons. So now we're going to try writing the isotopic notation for some of these others and tell how many neutrons each element has. So sodium. First we need to find sodium on the periodic chart. So sodium is in A. It's right there. It's element number 11. See the atomic number 11? Element number 11. Okay. And, and this also shows you its electron configuration right over here. 3s. Sodium goes to 3s1. Um, so atomic number 11, so sodium is in A. This is the mass number, it goes at the top. Atomic number is 11. So how many neutrons? Well, this 11, it has 11 protons because of that atomic number. And so the neutrons is going to be the mass number minus the atomic number. So 24 minus 11, so it has 13 neutrons. It's always the 24 minus the 11 to give you 13 neutrons. All right, what about hydrogen 2? Hydrogen 2, which has a special name called deuterium. Deuterium is the element hydrogen, just like tritium, tri, is the element hydrogen. So don't forget those things, because hydrogen can have an isotope of 2. Hydrogen can have, you can have hydrogen isotope of 1. So, but this is the 2. So hydrogen is the symbol. 2 is the mass number. And then hydrogen is the very first element on the chart, so there it is, hydrogen. And so it's just one, the atomic number is a one. So deuterium, there would be its 
um, isotopic notation, and 2 minus 1 is 1 neutron. So hydrogen has 1 neutron. This deuterium would be 1 proton, and I'll make that a, um, a red circle, a 1 neutron in the nucleus, a blue circle, and 1 electron going around. This is deuterium, H2, um, 1. That's hydrogen because it has that one proton. Now what about tritium? That toward hydrogen, the third isotope is H3 and the one at the bottom. That means 3 minus 1, 2 neutrons. So what would that look like? if I was drawing it out. It would have one proton because all hydrogen's atoms have one proton. It would have one, two neutrons because three minus one is two. So that's three things inside the nucleus. That's what it means by nucleons, um, things that are inside the nucleus, right here, nucleons. And then it would have still just one electron orbiting the nucleus. So this is the H31, right there. And the one, another one is just an H11. Well, how many neutrons is in that one? Zero, because that means one proton, just like this one has one proton, just like this one over here has one proton. But the number of neutrons changed. So this element would just be one proton, and it's being orbited by one electron with no neutrons in the center. All three of these things are isotopes of hydrogen. They are all hydrogen because they all have one proton, and the proton count identifies the element. It is the atomic number. On the periodic chart again, you can see the atomic number, one, two, five for boron. For germanium, it's 32. For tellurium, it's 52. For um, osmium, it's 76. That's the number of protons right there, number of protons, 76, that upper corner right there. 70, like this is vanadium, 23 protons, and in the neutral atom, 23 electrons. 23, beryllium, four protons, four electrons, okay? All right, let's keep going. So we're now, now we're gonna figure out lead 208. Well, we have to go back to the periodic chart and find lead, and lead, is there it is number 82 you see it 82 i'm clicking on it and then moving over you can actually uh, see this periodic table i embedded it in the prezi for chapter four so i just clicked on lead so i could go up here there it is there's the, the um, atomic number for lead it's number 82 there is the electron configuration for lead and all the way up to 6p2 so look this is energy level six this would be energy level five, and then goes back up to six on the P level, and P1, P2, so six P2 is what it is. So um, atomic number 82, so lead is PB, whoops, turn this up. And 208 goes at the top because that's the mass number, 82 goes at the bottom, and now we're gonna subtract them out and figure out how many neutrons is in this particular element, so. Turn this on, 208 minus 82, so that's 126, so 126 electron, uh, neutrons, 126, 126 neutrons. How many protons does this have? Well, 82 is the atomic number, so it has 82 protons. How many electrons does this have? Well, since neutral, it has no charge, so 82 electrons are in this element. What about uranium-235? Well, the symbol for uranium is a U. Let's go back and look at our chart and find it. There it is, uranium. And notice that the atomic number is a 92. Notice this really long um, electron configuration. We're not gonna use, um, do any in this F block area because it's a little bit above the scope of this course, but um, you can see the electron configuration for uranium, 92 is the atomic number, that means 92 protons, 92 electrons. So go back, put 235 at the top, that's the mass number, 92 at the bottom. Can't subtract them to figure out how many neutrons are in this ele um, element. So 235 minus 92, 
I get 143, 143 neutrons. Okay, 92 protons, 92 electrons, 143 neutrons. Now let's try this one. This is my made up element. What would be the isotopic notation for element CB278? That's my privium, okay? It has 135 protons. Well, CB is the symbol. 278 is the mass number because that's always connected right to this symbol. 135 protons would be the um, atomic number. Subtract them and I'll be able to figure out how many neutrons is in this. So 230, uh, 278 minus 135 is 143. 278 minus 135 is 143. So 143 neutrons in this one too. How many electrons does it have? Well, 143 neutrons, 135 protons, and because it's neutral, no charge, I also have 135 electrons. That's because protons are positive. Remember that? And electrons are negative, so, that, so um, they cancel each other out. If we have 135 positives and 135 negatives, so it would be 135 and a negative 135. Add that together, we get zero, no charge. Okay, let's move on to atomic mass. Um, atomic mass is expressed in atomic mass units, or AMUs. And um, an AMU is 1 12th the mass of carbon-12. So carbon-12, let's look at carbon-12. Carbon-12 is the, the atomic, I'm sorry, the mass number. Six protons in it, so it's, um, that's atomic number. Subtracted out, we also have six neutrons. So carbon has in its, if I drew carbon, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six protons, and one, two, three, four, five, six neutrons. And then I would, I would have, um, since this is neutral, six electrons. Two of them could be in the first energy level. And then four, one, two, three, four, in the second energy level. That's the valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons are in the outer energy level, outer outer energy shell. So this is not a really good circle because I was running out of room, but this is what it would look like. Now notice that in the middle of this, in the nucleus of the carbon, right here, I have 12 things. So I take the mass of that and divide it by 12, and I get the size of one AMU. It's one twelfth the mass of carbon. Now the atomic mass is a weighted average and it's very easy to calculate. Um, it's very similar to how you, we, I calculate your grade. So I'm going to just talk you through the example. So we have an example here. Magnesium, Mg, has three isotopes. Magnesium 24, and that's actual mass. This is the atomic, um, I'm sorry, the mass number. Remember that, that's the mass number. The mass number is not the mass, but sometimes if they don't give you the mass, you use the mass number as an estimate. So anyway, magnesium-24 is found in nature to be 78.99% of the time. Magnesium-25, there's its mass, is found at 10% of the time, and magnesium-26, there's its mass, is found at 11.10%. So step number one, turn all of the percentages to decimals, and um, hopefully you remember how to do that, but you basically just have to divide by 100. You move it over two places to the left. So, um, whoops, 78.99 becomes, move it two places to the left, 1, 2, 0.7899. And 10%, 10.00 becomes, move it two places to the left, 1, 2. 0.1000 and 11.01% becomes, move it two places to the left, 1, 2, 0 0.1101. So I turned all of them to the decimals. And then, the thing, then after that, we're going to multiply them by their masses. So follow me here. We take the mass is, uh, for the first one, 23.985. 23.985, and I'm going to multiply it by the, the decimal percentage. So 
So it was 78. Now it's 0 0.788. So 0 0.78, rather, 99. That's the first part. Then you add that to the next part. Find the mass. The, ma the mass is 24,986. And it is at 10%, which turns into 0 0.11. So multiply it times, sorry, 0 0.1000. Zero zero zero. Sorry, not 0 0.11, 0 0.1000. Zero then you add that to the next mass. 25.983 times, here's its per, um, percentage. And I turned it to decimal times 0 0.1101. Okay, see that one? That's, so I turned them all into decimals, and then I multiply the decimals times the mass. Now you just follow the sig fig rules. Okay, I multiply this times this and write down the number. So we're going to write down the numbers as we go. So 23, I'm going to turn the calculator back on, 23.985 times 0.7899. Enter. So that's 18.9457. 18.9457. Let's do the next one. 24.986 times 0.1. We could zero, 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 but it doesn't matter. 2.4986. 2.4986. Do the next one. I'm going to move it over. 25.983 times 0 0.1101. That's 2.86072. 2 2.86072. Now, for all of these, I wrote down more significant figures than I needed. Now, the tricky part count the sig figs. This is multiplication, so we count sig figs. This number has only four significant figures. This one has one, two, three, four, five. This has four, so my answer for this would need to stop in that spot. Four significant figures. Because we're multiplying. We're not looking at place value. We're counting them. This would be four sig figs. This number also has four sig figs. See? The 10%. you got to use those zeros. They are important. So I have to stop at four sig figs here. I would have to round to that spot. This one has four sig figs. So go to four sig figs here. I'd have to round. Now. Add them all together, and now that we're adding, we're going to pay attention to where the, the significant figure stopped, okay? So now we're going to add all these numbers together. So 23 point, sorry, no, that's right, not right. Uh, it's 18. 18.9457 plus 2.4986 plus 2.86072. Enter 24.305. I'm going to write that down. 24.305. 24.305. All right. Now let's pay attention to our sig figs. Now that we're adding, see, before we were multiplying, but now we're adding. So we look at precision rules. This is precise to the hundredths, the thousandths, and also the thousandths. So the hundredths place is the least precise, the fewest decimals. So I have to end in the hundredths place. So I'm going to round this. I look at the next number, and it tells me to round it up. So I round it up, 24.31 AMUs. So that's the atomic mass of magnesium. It's a weighted average of all the isotopes. In nature, most of the isotopes of, of uh, magnesium are 23.985, and then less for 24.98 and 25.98. So 24, it's closer to 24 than it is these other guys. So it is 24.3 is closer to this 24.9 than it is to the others. So now I'm going to look and see 24.31. A one way to know if you got it right is to look at a periodic chart at magnesium. So find magnesium. Here it is. Look at it. 24 point, notice this, 305. That was the number I had before I rounded. All that means is when they did the atomic mass, they had more significant figures than I had. But this number is corresponds perfectly to this right here. So the only reason I'm rounding up is because my significant figures were not as small. If I had a better instrument, I could have gotten left it there at this 24.305. Because it matches, I know that I did this math correct.
correctly. All right, let's move on. Now, there's a handout calculating average atomic mass. Um, I want you to actually do those for homework and, and grade and correct them all. Now, we're also going to talk about valence electrons uh, um, in this video. And I want you to be able to fill in the notes for valence electrons. But this is really easy, really easy. Valence electrons are the outermost electrons in the atom. Up here, I drew a picture of several different ones. Let's see. Whoops, not, that's too far. The valence electron for hydrogen is very simple because there's only one electron. Its outer electron is, beta, is a valence electron. For carbon, the ones in the second energy level, these right here, there are four of them. That's their valence electrons. It's the outer energy level electrons, the ones that are the farthest away from the nucleus. Okay. Now, there's an easy way to figure out what the valence electrons are. You can go look in your, um, on your periodic chart, and it says elements in rows 1a through 8a have the same number of valence electrons as the number of the column, right here, the number of the column. So let's look. So lithium has one, it's in column one, group one, it has one valence electron. So does hydrogen and sodium and potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Okay, now the numbers on the side are energy levels, principal energy levels. And that we talked about the principal energy levels when we talked about electron um, configuration. So let's look at magnesium. It's in group two. See, it's in group two, and it has, that means it has two valence electrons. Look at magnesium electron configuration. It's um, the three is the highest energy level. See, magnesium is energy level three, right there, energy level three. Here's its electron configuration. The three is its highest energy level, and it has these two electrons in the s orbitals. That's the two valence electrons for magnesium. So let me draw that for you, magnesium just for a second, okay? And this is magnesium right here. So magnesium, whoops. Well, how, what's the, the um, it's a element 12, okay, element 12. Magnesium has, tw I'm gonna just draw 12 Ps, 12 protons in the nucleus. Now there's some neutrons there too. So the electrons, the first two electrons would be in energy level one because energy level one can only hold two electrons. And then energy level two can hold eight. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight electrons. Okay? So how many is that? That's two plus eight is ten electrons. All right. And that's when energy level two is now full. Energy level three then gets the last two electrons. I'm going to just put them kind of far away from each other because they're all negatives and opposites attract, but the same likes repel. So here's... The last two electrons for magnesium are in energy level three. There's energy level one, energy level two, and energy level three. Those last two electrons are magnesium's valence electrons. And when we write electron dot notation or Lewis dot notation, we use that. Now, how many valence electrons in these? Let's just look. Argon. Find argon. There's argon. It's in column 18 or 8A. Your periodic chart would say 8A. Um, in fact, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, and 18 would be 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and 8A. And that's what you'll see in your periodic chart. There's two ways of numbering the groups. 1 and 2 are 1A and 2A. And these guys, all in the middle, um, they change. So we're, we're going to mostly talk about 1 and 2 and then 13 through 18. So argon is in group 18 or 8A, so it has 8 valence electrons. We're going to skip nickel for the moment. Sodium. Sodium is in group one, so it has one valence electron. Selenium. Selenium is right here in group 16 or 6A, so it has six valence electrons. Bromine. Bromine is in group 17 or 7A, so it has seven valence electrons. Arsenic. Arsenic is, there it is, arsenic is, is number 33 in group 15 or 5A, so it has five valence electrons. And magnesium, we just figured out, has three valence electrons. And what about nickel? Nickel is in the middle. It's one of those right there. There's nickel. 
In order to figure out Nichols, you need to look at its electron dot notation, electron dot. There it is, or Lewis dot. It goes all the way up to energy level 4. Even though the 4s is lifted, listed here, um, we're gonna, we go straight through 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and where are we going? Oh, nickel. 4s2, and remember it goes back down in the middle. 3d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 3d8, and so there it's 3d8. All right, the 4s2 though, that's still the higher energy level. So nickel has, that's, that's the, the higher principal energy level. So nickel really has only two valence electrons because the four right here, the first number in the electron dot, or Lewis, sorry, electron configuration um, is the energy level. So four is higher than three, and so there's two valence electrons, two for nickel. And we'll go through this some more, we'll practice some more. All right, now the Lewis, the electron dot notation is easy. You just look the valence electrons and put the electrons around it, okay? So sulfur has a symbol of an S. I go look at the chart and find out how many um, valence electrons. There's sulfur in group 16 or 6A. That means six valence electrons. And I draw the six electrons around the symbol of S. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now there's no perfect way to draw these dots, but only two on the north, south, east, or west. Only two on the north, south, east, or west. If you drew it like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, that is also okay. I'm just going to be counting the number of electrons around your symbol. Boron. Let's find boron. It's symbol B, and it is right here. It's in column 13, or 3A. That means it has three valence electrons. So i got to put them around the symbol for boron. One, two, three. And that's it. That's all you have to do for those. Now the last little thing on here before the addendum, which I sent by email, or I may have given it out in class, depending on when we are, um, atoms when, if, are ionized if they gain or lose electrons. Because remember, if they're neutral, they have to have the same number of protons and the same number of electrons. Anions are a negative ion. I usually like to write it like this. An anion is a negative a negative ion. Okay, I'm sorry if you heard that ringing. So anyway, an, uh, an anion is a negative ion. A negative ion has more electrons, because electrons are negative, than protons, because protons are positive. And a cation, and I like to write it like this, there's a plus sign in the middle of the word. The T makes a plus sign. Is, is positive, are positive ions, they have more protons, more positives than, than electrons, than negatives. So the chlorine anion, the chlorine, Cl, and if you look at your periodic chart again, chlorine, there it is, seven valence electrons. Now, one thing that we're going to talk about a little bit is the octet rule. Uh, we'll introduce it more later, but oct means eight, and, and atoms are happiest when they have eight valence electrons. They're most stable. So chlorine has seven. It just needs to find one more to have eight. So let's put the seven valence of electrons around it that it starts off with. This is its normal amount, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So if it can find one more electron to fill that spot, that last spot, I'm trying to get the blue there, there it goes, then it'll be happy. It's got eight, eight valence electrons now because it added one. Well, that's one more electron than it used to have, so it has a negative one charge. Because before chlorine had, um, let's see, what is the atomic number? Chlorine is atomic number 17, which means 17 protons, and it had 17 electrons. So before I added before I added this extra electron, I had 17 protons, and 17 so 17 protons and 17 electrons, and that added that equals zero. But then I put one more in, so now I have one more plus one more electron, so it has a negative one charge. So now instead of 17, I have 18 electrons. That gives you that extra negative. Now magnesium, magnesium is Mg, and we've already seen that it has two valence electrons. We said that right up here, magnesium, no, sorry, three, three valence electrons. 
Let me make sure I got that right. Let me see right. No, it has two. It's energy level. It's in energy level three, but it's in period. I'm sorry, group two. Only two valence electrons. I, we need to fix that. I wrote that wrong. Two. I I wrote down two here and put the number three there. Sorry. So yes, you see that? Hopefully you're correcting that. There are two valence electrons for magnesium right there. There they are. It should have two valence electrons, not three. It has three energy levels. Sorry. So there's two valence electrons. Well, if you look at the periodic chart, if, if magnesium loses its two valence electrons, then, then it goes back up to just where energy level two is and, and it has one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It would have eight electrons in its lower energy level. Let's look at the drawing again. So there's magnesium. It has two valence electrons. Well, what happens if those two electrons are taken away? So I'm going to erase them. If I lose that electron, I lose the entire energy level for one. But also, I now, now the outer shell for um, magnesium has eight electrons. Two, four, six, eight. The atoms are all, all trying to get to that configuration to try to have eight, the octet, octet, to have eight. So magnesium then will lose. It's going to get rid of its electrons and give them to somebody who needs them. In fact, magnesium might give its electron to chlorine and to two of them. But when it loses electrons, it started off with, uh, let's see, how many, 12? 12 protons and 12 electrons. It started off with 12 protons and 12 electrons. Well, now I'm going to subtract out. I'm going to go down from 12 down to 10 electrons. So that's going to be positive 12 minus 10. It has a plus 2 charge. Magnesium now has a plus 2 charge. So when you, over here with chlorine, the final electron dot should have been chlorine with 8 electrons around it. And because it added one, we have to put a brackets in that negative symbol outside to let you know that it's a minus one charge. Well, for magnesium, you put Mg, the bracket, because it lo um, gained, sorry, it lost these two, so now it has a plus two charge. So keep that straight. If you lose electrons, you're losing negatives. So we went down from 12 to 10, so if we subtract out 10, I have a plus two charge, and before I had a zero. You gain electrons, see I added one here, 17 plus one equals 18. And that gives me that one that I added makes it have a negative charge. So that's the end of the notes for chapter four. And hopefully that will help you. I will see you soon and we will go over anything you need to review.